It's Don here from The Board. Thank you for coming along and checking out another one of our videos. Today, we're going to get right into it and we're going to be checking out the pluggable inverted USB microscope. A little while ago, I had done a review for their standard digital microscope and when I was told that they were coming out with a new microscope, I was really excited, I was really interested because obviously uh, I have a bit of a background in microscopy and I was hoping that this model might provide some different, uh, more scaled up features closer to a sort of standard laboratory type microscope. Now, I don't actually know if that's going to be the case, but uh, thank you very much to Josh from Pluggable for being able to arrange uh, this particular unit to me. I actually did do a trade for it, so it wasn't completely as such a gift. So uh, whatever opinions that I give are purely of my own, and this is not a paid review for this unit. So let's have a look at what we actually get and uh, what not. Now I haven't opened this up uh, so I don't really know what I'm expecting to see inside. It's a rather large box uh, scaled to my head. You can see it's it's pretty big. Um, it doesn't weigh that much and it you can kind of hear little bits of pieces might be moving inside. So first look on the outside um, pluggable USB 2.0 inverted digital optical microscope. So uh, let's see maybe if I just turn it sideways you can see down here it actually says that it's got a 800 times magnification. <clears throat> Side of the box uh, we've got 800x, it's 2 megapixel sensor, it's got LED lighting with an optical eyepiece. I'm not sure if it's quite catching at the bottom there and says the same thing on the other side as well. And then if we have a look on the back, it lists the features. So 800 times fixed magnification. Now that's actually a really interesting choice to have a fixed microscope zoom. Uh, you tend to find fixed will limit you in what you can see, but at the same time, depending on what you're trying to see, fixed is perfectly fine as well. Uses the standard webcam drivers, backlit LED for slide or petri dish, which is pretty cool optical IP so you can have a look at it without actually using a computer and then of course there's some software available um, uh, 16 by 1200 snapshot which is pretty cool and uh, sort of VGA level 640 by 480 video so nothing too spectacular but the package contains quite a lot of things we've got a microscope cable petri dish dropper tweezers some slides blank slides an accessory box and of course standard quick start so, uh, and then just usual bits on the bottom about you can go to the website for support and whatnot. So let's have a, have a look and see what we get. All right, make sure I uh, open this in the right orientation so stuff doesn't fall out. <clears throat> it's fairly neatly with a, a molded plastic tray by the looks of it. Um, I think there's a bit of paper in here is the uh, the manual quick start guide but first impressions it's it's big um, compared to of course the other unit which was a much smaller unit probably about that big and as you can see it is a inverted style now I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in a moment that looks to be the accessories case there's a petri dish in here which looks like it's got a, a magnifier in it already there's our cable and I guess the other bits and pieces must live inside the accessories case. So, it's, uh, now this is a, an active or a powered, I think, with a, a ground loop isolator installed in there as well. Um, obviously, to ensure that you're not going to have any surges and whatnot or overcurrent, perhaps, getting into the microscope. Let's take that out. Let's uh, take out the Petri dish and... Last but not least, the microscope. Wow, okay. Let's have a look all around. All right, so that's the front facing end of it. Up the top, you can see there's a sort of light indicator there. Bright, not so bright, it's a uh, it's slider. Okay, so it's spring loaded and returns back to center. Um, down here looks like that there's a snapshot button. So you can just press that to get a snapshot. It does say specifically that it's at 800x there. Not quite sure what's going on with uh, 
these two knobs as such yet, but we'll have a look in the manual. And what's really cool is the fact that it does actually have a variable focus, which is there. I was hoping that it was going to have a focus because if you don't have a focus, that would have been a really poor design choice. Um, we've got our USB connection at the back, standard mini B by the looks of it, I think. And what's really interesting down here is there's actually a compartment and if I pop that open, it will take batteries. So when they talk about being able to use this without a computer because it's got an optical eyepiece, which is, uh, I think, okay, how, how am I going to look at this without, uh, I guess the quick start hopefully will tell me that you can, how you can look at this without uh, using a computer, but at least it's got a battery compartment. So if you want to run off batteries to power it, that would be ideal. So maybe we should just uh, have a quick look at the quick guide before we get too bogged down into it and put that aside for the moment. So there's the quick start guide, English, Espanol, Francais, Francais, Dutch and Japanese. Whoa, that's a very busy looking graphics page there. So 800x, inverted to observe much larger samples. Um, install the software, attach the USB, attach the end to any USB port, open the pluggable digital viewer. In the settings, ensure the microscope is a selected device. Okay. Um, that's, that's it. Um, I do not see anything about using this without a computer. So before we get plugging it in, let's also crack open this case and see what we've got. Uh, so there's your tweezers, fairly simple, standard plastic um, bog tweezers, nothing exciting or whatnot about them, oh, except for the fact that they don't want to, what, how did I even get these out? They don't want to go back in? There, there, there. Maybe? No? How? In the diggins. Anyway, all right. There's the dropper. We've got some pre-prepared slides. Let me just, uh, there's some pre-prepared slides by the looks of it with those cover slips already there. And there's some more cover slips in here as well, which is pretty cool. Um, very small cover slips. Now in here we see a onion bulb epiderm. We have Let's just put that down. We have a tiller stem. I don't even know what a tiller is. We have rabbit hair. Rabbit hair. And then of course the other slides are just uh, just blank empties. That's nice that they've got a frosted slide. They feel they're plastic slides. Uh, not glass slides, so I guess that means there's a certain element of safety, which is a nice touch. That said, though, if they do get sort of scratched and damaged, you will lose image quality on them much faster compared to glass slides. However, it doesn't mean that you can't use glass slides. So, you know, I think that's good that they've taken that into consideration. Uh, that said, hopefully quarantine aren't going to get upset that these microscope slides have kind of made it into the country, and obviously I don't know what kind of condition they're in. Now, I don't know how they've prepared these slides. They look like they might just be a sticker over the top as a, a cover plate, but uh, it doesn't matter because as a inverted microscope, the light path is actually traveling underneath, which means um, anything that you've got on top is not gonna be as much of an issue compared to if you were using a normal glass slide and you needed a medium to travel through the actual slide. That, I just pop something, break something? Um, let's just put that aside. Now here's the Petri dish and it looks like it's actually got a magnifier built into it, which is pretty cool. So if you needed to, you can always just look at something ordinarily without actually using a microscope. Don't know what kind of colonies I'm potentially going to be growing in that. And, uh, once again, we're back to, uh, back to this. Now it's interesting because, uh, I honestly don't know how you're going to Ah, okay. 
Hey, here we go. So the guy doesn't really tell you what's going on here, but there is the optical eyepiece. So that actually pops in and out, um, and that just changes the path so that you can actually see. Because I was trying to think, if that was actually the lens, why isn't it lined up to the actual uh, light path? And by moving it, I can see that's actually the eyepiece. So rather than, well, of course that makes sense now you think about it, because the eyepiece isn't going to be up here where the light source is. Um, so yeah, you can sort of squeeze through it like that, in theory. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Now let's just get the cable provided, plug it in, and have a quick squeeze. And of course I probably need to uh, download some software too while I'm at it, if we're going to test out the actual software capture for it. I don't know off the top of my head if it's going to be um, the same as the earlier microscope that I've already had a look at or not. So that's a quite nice snug fit. It's the same type that goes into your mobile phones these days, whatever type type is. Micro B, I think it's a Micro B, not the Mini. Mini being for the keyboard. Um, and is this going to be the curse of USB devices? Yes. Well, hey, we have light. What happened to my power? No power. Okay, so uh, I think it probably wants the software if it wants to be driven. Whereas if you see, if I tilt out the eyepiece, the light actually comes on. So that's a nice little handy uh, feature there. You're going to save power if the computer's not actually driving. Whereas if you've got that open, it, it determines that you actually want to manually look at it. And then that way it'll turn on the light. So first of all, let's see if uh, that actually does anything. It does. Um, it's stepwise. So your camera's probably not showing it very well. But if I step it down towards the lower, it's kind of dimmed a little bit in its light intensity. And then as I step it towards the camera, you can kind of see it getting brighter. Yeah, you can see it on the camera, that, that light radii that's happening there, it's getting much, much brighter. Now, of course, the quick scart doesn't actually tell you how many steps it has, but there certainly is a change in the intensity because you can see the halo that's actually glowing around here is reducing as I step that down. Looks like there's a bit of a delay as well, so I can't just rapidly step it down, see that's not doing anything. Um, but if I sort of give it a second in between each step down, it does actually come down. So that's quite low. So let's have a look through here at the moment. Eye relief, even better. I was going to say there's not much eye relief, but that does actually come out. So it means you're not going to be smashing your head straight into it. And uh, it's a comfortable level. It's not terribly bright. And just by turning the dial, actually, I don't know if the, micros, the microphone was picking all of that up or not. Maybe I'm going to turn it this way, and then I can drop the microphone down so it's a little bit easier to see. But uh, even with nothing on the plate, I can say that it is the focus is actually working. You can see that it's trying to focus on the dust and whatnot that's actually on the surface there. And on the largest, on the lowest intensity it isn't hurting my eyes but uh, I can imagine if you did want to jack it up quite bright you probably would actually hurt your eyes so very very careful when using it in the manual optical mode <laughs> all right now I'm going to uh, off the uh, off the actual camera let's head over to their site uh, now of course I probably could have done this if I'd known about it earlier, but uh, what have we got? Drivers slash microscope, hey? Drivers, well, thankfully at least their web page is relatively easy to work with. Uh, USB microscope. Now, it doesn't look like it is very different. So let's see if I can identify where I previously installed it. Um, I didn't uninstall it, so it should still be here somewhere. Pluggable Technologies, Digital Viewer. 
here we go and uh, settings we have USB microscope um, and it does go up to the 1600 which is pretty cool uh, let's go apply now what's happening here uh, take a photo start time lapse hmm I don't know what's going on here because it doesn't seem like that's doing very much so maybe do we have a, a version here more no okay <clears throat> maybe that that digital viewer is not what we're after all right, we're going to have to try and download. Now, I, I realize that you haven't seen what's going on on my screen, but uh, we'll uh, I have to apologize for that. So, save it to uh, my installers. Twelve megabyte file, relatively quick if you're on a decent connection. Uh, nothing terribly difficult by the looks of it. Uh, I've run the install. Where's it going to pop up? There we go. Uh, destination folder is going to be D drive. Let's see. Program files on D drive. Yep, that's fine. Install. Now it looks like it might actually be a different version, an updated version of the drivers, which is fantastic. Uh, obviously when I last did the install was for the other microscope, so having something that's updated that can drive both microscopes would be pretty cool. It uh, is about 25% at the moment. It's doing its thing. No other prompts are coming up. Oh, something flashed on the screen. So, so I haven't really explained my background very much, at least in this video, because you may not have actually seen the previous video, and I can't actually remember what I said in there as well, but I actually have a, a Master's in Applied Science where my major for the masters was in microscopy in primarily electron microscopy but i did do a very large portion of uh, light optical microscopy as well in microscopy and microanalysis so i have quite a uh, a fond place i guess in my heart in regards to microscopes so i've used little microscopes dissecting microscopes light optical confocals i've used scanning electron microscopes transmission electron microscopes of all sorts of varieties at uh, sort of the university academic and research level. So whenever a microscope product for the home use comes by, um, it's always really interesting for me to look at and poke at because obviously, you know, I have uh, I have interest in it. Now, I don't actually know if this is going to open that. What? Hmm. Just gonna. Uh, where did that program end up? Where did that program end up? I just installed something and I have no idea what it opens. I'm going to have to navigate around um, and see what did it actually install. Programs, uh, pluggable technologies, digital viewer, and uh, interesting, 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 interesting. Okay, what, what, what? Let's go back to the installer. Um, and then my computer is doing a lot of thinking. That's not it. Okay, digital viewer 3107. Let's go back. And try that again. It's going to go into D drive. Plug all digital viewer. Show the details this time. So we're extracting some uh, an X feed of some kind. It's executing. It's extracted 100%. It's executing some kind of other program. Stuff is flashing up just like it did before. Aha, uh -huh. so there was an error. Let's close that by the looks of it and retry. There we go. Create a shortcut 
in start menu program something or other. Now I can't obviously see what that line is. I'm going to copy that to clipboard and uh, open it up on notepad. And where is it going to? So viewer.link. All right. Just uh, bear with me, everybody. Bear with me. Pluggable digital microscope viewer. So it's exactly the same thing that I had before. Um, I'm just not sure what I'm meant to be seeing. So take a photo, time lapse, start recording. Um, let me just open that up to full screen and then we can actually have a look at what's going on. Just going to switch over to. Uh, Eesh. I'm going to drag my obs off the screen and that way we're not going to end up with an infinite loop. So that's that and that's that. So that's what we're seeing at the moment. Um, take a snapshot. Ah, okay. Hey, right, there we go. Um, silly me. So what I kind of didn't do was convert it to the actual computer driven mode because I still had the optical light piece so everything was displaying black and uh, that was just really dumb on my behalf so I do apologize for that because obviously that was a little bit of uh, not quite thinking there fantastic so it looks like it's working it's powered now if I jiggle the light mode you can see that it's something's flashing because it's trying to uh, it's normalizing the light in the computer software so even though it's actually getting brighter, um, oh, we've got some color palette changes as it's trying to normalize. So let's just scale it back a little bit. Uh, and let's just turn off left monitor for the moment. So you can see it's gone actually quite bright. So I'm just going to uh, bump that a little bit. Now let's take out a slide. We're going to be checking out the, uh, if it'll come into focus, the onion epiderm. So let's uh, pop that in. We all right now. You can't see that because obviously I don't have the left monitor on. But let's switch over to left monitor, and now we've actually got something on the screen. And let's turn the focus. Gone the wrong way, and it comes into focus. And look at that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now what you're seeing there as I turn the focus knob is the fact that I'm passing through the different layers of the onion epiderm. Um, it looks pretty chunky because at the moment, because it's running on video, it's only running at 640 by 480 resolution and it's on a 2K monitor. So it does actually look pretty chunky. But um, if you were to take a snapshot of that, in theory, so let's press the snapshot button. All right, snapshot is taken, which is down here. And I open that up. Um, OK, it seems to be on the smaller side, because if I drag that over, you'll see that's the 640 by 480 snapshot from the video. If I stop the video, can I stop the video? I can't stop the video, but can I? No. Let's take a photo. That's another photo. I've taken two photos. And again, um, that seems to be the uh, zoom. What's that? Is that 100%? So I'm not quite sure what's happening there with uh, the actual resolution. I guess it is taking it technically at 16, um, maybe 100. Or, or maybe it's just because. Uh, Maybe if I stop the video, I'll just uh, exit that for the moment. I want to quit. Yes. I'm going to close these two examples. I'll close that. Uh, let's just go back into the viewer again. There we go. So it's automatically running. Um, but what are my settings for the picture? There's my device setup. Oh, okay. It's a little bit unusual. Huh. In the in the device setup, I'm just going to turn my screen back on. 
it's actually detecting a completely different device, um, which is really weird. Logitech Quick Cam, um, which is not the microscope. So uh, it's a little bit strange. And, and all I'm doing is clicking on that. Whereas if I actually switch over to the USB microscope, it ends up not doing the USB microscope. So I don't know what's going on there, pluggable. But uh, that's just something to maybe think about what's going on there. If I switch over to... Wow, these are these are all off. Um, <laughs> so what what you just saw there when I went to the uh, um, that camera, that is the actual life uh, the the quick cam because I'm using it as a uh, a baby camera as you can see the mess that my home is having laundry out all the time and of course the baby's uh, cot. So if I go to this, it doesn't have it, which is just plain weird. So Let's uh, restart the program again. Uh, I realize I'm being a bit of a pain. Um, but that is just whack. That is just absolutely whack. So, digital viewer, and we're back again with the way that it should be. Back again. All right, so let's take away the, uh, the onion epiderm. And then we can have a look at whatever this uh, rabbit hair. All right, let's check out some rabbit hair. Oh, there is some rabbit hair. If I can get some into the center of the uh, the viewing area. There we go. And then we can tweak the focus and, and there you go. There's some very chunky uh, looking rabbit hair. It's nice. Um, definitely does have educational value. Don't get me wrong. It certainly will do the job, especially for sort of entry-level science, primary school science, that kind of stuff. Very simple things that you want to look at. Um, I also know why 800 is the kind of limit that they've gone to here, because typically, if you want to go up to 1,000, which is actually the limit for light microscopes, where you can see diatomes, where you can actually resolve the wavelength of diatomes, you need to have oil immersion against the lens. Um, and that's just a, an issue of white light. So without messing around trying to get light happening and without adding extra cost by having different lens magnifications because typically you'll have like a four times ten times twenty times forty times eighty times and then one hundred times and the one hundred times is where you get your thousand times magnification um, but you have to use oil immersion and of course oil immersion gets messy and the lenses tend to be more expensive um, and of course you just don't want to add that extra cost onto it if you can avoid it. Finally, let's have a look at this tiller stem. I'm assuming it's some kind of plant because it's a stem. And there we go. We can definitely see some plant cells there as well. Um, so you can see some uh, phylum there by the looks of it. You can see some water channels happening. Um, incidentally, of course, my uh, my thesis for my masters was on ancient Egyptian coffin timbers. That was pretty cool. So I do know a little bit about looking at uh, wood samples as well. So just trying to get the focus in to play there. Now that's quite bright. It's very saturated. So what I can do there is I can just try and step down the light intensity, which is what I'm doing. But uh, as you can see, anything that I do is actually causing I'm um, all I'm doing is just moving the light controller and it's actually moving the image so it's quite sensitive I mean at 800x you would naturally assume it's quite sensitive but the white balance is actually maintaining that brightness as well quite spectacularly quite spectacularly what I would like to see from this um, being a microscopist Obviously, I'm very spoilt because I've used much higher end level of microscopes. Um, and you can't fault it. This thing is, I think, 75 US plus shipping, something like that, thereabouts, on Pluggable's website, uh, which, of course, you would get through Amazon anyway because I don't think you can buy it directly on their website. But what I would really like to be able to see on anything that's a home use is being able to control your illumination very cleanly as well as having 
an actual condenser on it. Now, if you don't know anything about microscopes, that's fine, but there's a thing called Kohler Illumination, K-O-H-L-E-R, and by using a iris that you can open and close, the iris allows you to cut out light to a certain degree, which will give you a better resolution. Now, it doesn't matter how good your lenses and optics are, if you don't control the light that's actually going through your sample to your collector, whether it's your eye or whether it's an actual, uh, you know, digital array of sorts, um, like, a, what do they call them? The, the photo sensors, um, CCDs, then you're not going to get as good an image quality. And color illumination is very important for that. So all high-end microscopes will have the ability, at least light optical microscopes, my apologies there, will tend to have the condenser on it. Now, naturally, by having a condenser on it, you're going to have more moving parts, which means you have to either design it well or package it well. And then, of course, there's additional cost on top. That said, for $75 here, if you were to add, say, you know, a condenser on it, it might add another $10, $15 for a very simple, cheap one, or maybe $20, bucks, $25 bucks, uh, on top, and then bring it to around 100 bucks. That said, I don't know if they've done, done any testing on it to see if adding a condenser would improve the actual performance of their microscope, and also because it's as an entry-level kind of thing to look at very simple things, is it absolutely necessary? No, it's not absolutely necessary, but is it something that would add value and benefit? Yes, but then that's when you're gonna be weighing up the difference between the cost and the benefit. And then of course you have to teach people actually how to do color illumination correctly, because if you don't do it correctly, then there's no point in doing it at all, because you're just not gonna get good results. So, um, that's a, a pretty quick look. Uh, when I say quick, it's been like, what, half an hour? So I suppose that's relatively quick for my reviews. Um, how would I rate this device? I would say it's a good solid 7.5 to 8 out of 10. Works straight out of the box. It produces relatively usable images. I'm still not 100% sure what it is in regards to resolution and image capture because it says 1200 by 600, but I don't know if it's because it's messing around and interfering with all of my other USB devices. Now, of course, I have three other webcams that are hooked up right now, and they are running, as well as the fact that I'm running through OBS to do this video, and then this is being added in as another USB camera device, so maybe it's getting its signals mixed up, and that's why it's only outputting to a much lower resolution image compared to what it should be doing, because it's trying to capture my baby cam uh, level resolution, since the drivers seem to be a little bit confused there. That said, it's very user friendly, very simple, straight out of the box, slide in it goes, there it is. Um, I'm just going to switch back onto the desktop. What I'm a little bit not quite sure uh, what's going on here uh, is that what are these two screws for? Um, these, these, there's a, there's like a, a screw right there, and there's a, a thumb screw there as well. Um, I kind of want to undo them, but at the same time, I don't. Now, I'm just going to turn off the software, and maybe that'll uh, turn the light off, because I don't want to be powering that on. There we go, so the light's off, because um, otherwise I might accidentally shine myself in the face with it. But it looks like kind of can't really catch it very well here, but there we go. So that thumb screw just goes into this block here. Um, what does it do? Uh, is it some kind of adjustment? Like this actual mount here, this mount has a bit of cable. There's a bit of red wire. I, I just don't. Uh, yeah, you can kind of just see it. There's a little bit of red wire there. Um, what does that go to? Does that go to the actual, the, the camera? Because the construction of this, that looks like that might hold the actual uh, camera, the, the USB camera. But if that's where there's power going to, then what's happening in here? Uh, is it just the optics to actually reflect it there? but then why would you wire it through the stage as opposed to through the bottom of this design? So, not 
a hundred percent sure what's going on there. Um, but you know, I can't really complain too heavily. But for the moment, anyway, I'm not going to bother touching those screws unless if it's some kind of alignment thing. So there you go. There is the uh, pluggable Micro 800X. Concluding remarks. Um, I've already said it. Plenty. Lightweight. Works out of the box. Simple stuff. Uh, are there movement? That movement. Is there room for improvements? Just created a new word there. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course there is, but of course there's always going to be cost involved. So it's up to them, and I would be really keen to see what their next iteration and version of the USB microscope is going to be like. So there you have it. Now, uh, thank you, of course, for coming along and checking out the microscope. Um, thank you to Josh for arranging the trade for this microscope and, of course, shipping it over. Um, I'm certainly going to be interested to see uh, how my daughter might handle this as she grows up. Uh, I can imagine that it's certainly going to be something I'm going to keep around as well. On a day-to-day -day basis, I probably am not going to be preparing terribly many slides. I actually do have some slides, but they're actually at my parents' place from my microscopy days, so I'll have to dig them up and see what it looks like through this. And then, of course, if only the interface for the actual computer and the image capture might be improved so that you can take cleaner pictures at that resolution promised on the box. Now, of course, wrapping up on the video. Um, for those who have subscribed, thank you very much. For those who participated in our 600 subscriber giveaway, uh, congratulations to Brendan, who is over in New Zealand. I've already sent that cap to them, and hopefully they'll get it very soon. We're currently just over 660 subscribers. So the next bracket where we're going to actually have a giveaway is 700. And we're going to be doing another draw for the last of the Movember caps, which is uh, this red-nosed version of the Movember cap with the clear background uh, for MX stems at 700. So if you're interested in winning this and you haven't subscribed, please, of course, subscribe to our channel. If you like this video, if you like any of the other videos, please hit like. And if you want to spread the word, please share as well. We would really love and appreciate it. And finally, we've had some people suggest that we open a Patreon account for our podcast series. Um, we've been thinking about that kind of thing for a while, but we haven't really been able to think of rewards that wouldn't exclude people because we don't want to have sort of elitist content as such. There has been suggestions of things like maybe early release access to episodes so you can hear it you know a couple of days before other people we've had people make suggestions that i could maybe do like recordings or voiceovers for people short things like voicemail messages or other things um depending on the tiers so if you've got suggestions of what you would be interested in for a patreon uh, account campaign and support for the youtube and for our podcast series then please comment below or just hit us up on Reddit and let us know. Otherwise, you can also email us at theboardpodcast at gmail.com. we fantastic to hear from you. So uh, that's it. I'm going to call it a day, wrap it up before it hits an hour, uh, which would be an awesome length review for a microscope, but probably a bit long for most people. So as always, until next time, happy clacking.